Welcome to a Key Smash Studios tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to use trigger boxes to activate an animation in scene. This is the second part of a two video series. If you missed the first one that covered how to create animations inside of Unreal, and I'll provide the link to that video in the description below. As you're watching, if you find this video helpful, please remember to like and subscribe. Pretty much the only thing we're going to be doing inside this tutorial is creating a trigger box, but first I want to show you how to get the script of your character because we'll end up needing that. So you're going to want to click on your character in your scene, go down to where it says the name of it in your details panel, and then look at the parent class name. You're going to want the header of that parent class included inside the trigger box that we're going to create. So we can go ahead and go over to our content browser and create that C++ class. You're going to want to go over to show all classes, and then we're going to search for trigger box. You can go ahead and click on it and click next. I'm going to name mine a ghost box and click create class. So now that this is open, the first thing we're going to want to do is go up to our includes and add a few different ones. The first one we're going to add is game framework slash actor dot h. And then you're going to want to include your character controller. Again, you can get the name of that by looking at the parent class of your object in the scene. So mine is trigger anim tutorial character.h. And now what we want to do is two different includes for our level sequences. So the first one is level sequence slash public slash level sequence actor. And then the one after that is going to be level sequence again slash public. And this one is going to be level sequence player. And you may get a red underline under your include. And if you do get this, you're going to want to go over to your source files and find your project name.build.cs. And you're going to want to go to your public dependencies and to add level sequence. And then from there, you're going to want to also add to your private dependencies, module names, dot add range. And this one is going to be new string movie scene. And that should get rid of any unable to find file errors and you can go back to your header and we can go ahead and create our functions. So we'll start with protected and we're going to do virtual void begin play and then you can do public and the first thing we're going to create is our constructor. So a my ghost box. And then we want to create our function that we're going to use to play the animation. So u function void play animation. And then it's going to have two parameters. The first one is going to be an a actor. So class a actor. And we're going to call this overlapped actor. And then the second one will also be class A actor. And this one will be called other actor. And this is the basic function that trigger boxes use for checking overlaps. So now we can go ahead and create our property. We want this property to be edit anywhere so that we can add the level sequence to the trigger box inside the details panel. And this is going to be a level sequence actor and we're going to call it ghost. So that's everything inside our header. So we can go ahead and go over to our CPP 
And the first thing we're going to do inside this is create our constructor. So you're going to do a my ghost box. A my ghost box. And then inside this, we want to do on actor begin overlap. And then we want to add dynamic. And we want to add this dynamic to this object. And then the function we want to use is a my ghost box play animation. Now we can do begin play, so we can do void a my ghost box begin play. And then we're just going to do super begin play. And finally, we can create our play animation function. So again, void a my ghost box play animation class a a actor overlapped actor class a a actor other actor. And the first thing we want to do inside this function is make sure the other actor exists. So if other actor, and we also want to make sure that the other actor is not this actor. So other actor does not equal this. After we've made sure that both of those are true, we want to go ahead and cast to our character. So we're going to do a trigger tutorial character. And we're just going to call it character. And then we're going to cast to a trigger tutorial character. And then we're going to get this one from get world. Get first player controller. Get character. And then we want to make sure that this cast was successful. So we're going to do if character. And then we also want to make sure that our ghost isn't null. So we'll go ahead and say and ghost as well. Once we've checked that neither of those are null, we'll go ahead and make sure that our ghost's sequence player isn't null. So ghost sequence player. And then if that isn't null, we want to go ahead and play the animation. So ghost sequence player play. And that's all of the scripting we'll be doing. So we can go ahead and minimize this and compile. And again, if you watched the previous video, I mentioned at the end of it that I'd be creating a second ghost between that video and this video as it was part of the initial request. If you only have one ghost, it doesn't matter. It's one trigger box per ghost. So you'll just put in one trigger box instead of two. While we're waiting on this to compile, we can go ahead and go to our ghost in and ghost out sequences and make sure to turn off autoplay that we had as true in the previous video. Now that the compile is completed, we can go ahead and add our trigger boxes to the scene. So I'm going to drag one out in front of my player and one out behind my player. And I'm going to slightly expand their size. And then you want to make sure that the correct level sequence is attached to the correct trigger box. So for my ghost box one, I want to make sure that ghost in is the property for ghost. And then for trigger box three, I want to make sure that ghost out is the correct trigger box. Now that that's done, we can go ahead and test and play. And as you can see, the ghost is sitting there. And if I go up and hit the trigger box, it comes towards me and turns and then disappears. And if I turn around to run away and hit this trigger box, the ghost appears and then runs off. As a really quick recap, we created a trigger box that would activate our level sequence animations inside of our scene. As always, I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions or suggestions, you can leave them in the comments or feel free to join our Discord and ask them there. The link for that will be in the description below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you next time.